Dude, I just got the notification tickets are on sale. Are you got to get them for the Kings game? Yeah, man, I'm all right. What's your Wait, problem? Can you, do, can you just give me a hat? It's really bright this week. We're having a just, chat. Just, just give me the hat. Yeah, we'll start right. with five minutes. Jeez. Oh, yeah, okay. You can have the pen return. I don't care. It's just too bright. Must boo referees and injured players. Hey all, welcome back to another episode of Rugby League Outlaws. Oh, it's so much better. Thank you so Brought much. Brought to you by our good friends at uh, Top Sport, onelittlefootyfan.com.au mm. and the Stubby Club. Don't That's correct. To like subscribe. Welcome back, Dan. Thank you. I feel uh, much better. Rugby League. Rugby it's League. Back. Round two is over. The season's flying. It is. Upsets galore. I love it. It's good fun. Now, look, off the back of the, uh, the Dolphins. I can still feel the hat. Going 2-0. and oh. Straight away, we've come out with more expansion talk. 20 teams they're talking about. And not even the teams in the right places. <laughs> no, no. It's just, every year, it's like, hey, rugby league, expansion! Expansion! Let's get a Pacifica team and base it out of Cairns. I don't, I don't, I don't hate it. I do. But can we just, just can we, 17 teams... Only 10 of them are good. Can we get this right first, please? My, my, my issue with... I hear people saying there needs to be a Papua New Guinea team or there needs to be a Pacific team. Outside of the players who live in this country, who's going to want to sign to go and play there? You can't. That's why they want to base it in Cairns. But then... Yeah, but they can't base the Papua New Guinea team in Cairns. No. Okay, I like the idea in theory. A 20-team competition is great. Bringing those rugby league mad nations, in theory, is fantastic. It's going to cost us some mozza to go to games. Like you said, outside of locally based players, who's going to sign for these teams? I'll, I'll, it's just so many problems. I'll, I'll, I'll say this now. You put a team in Papua New Guinea, mm -hmm. you'll only get people who live in Papua New Guinea. They will come last every year. Like the they Tigers will, will beat them. Just. Yeah, only just. Just. I, I think that's completely fair. If you're going to expand, Perth is the obvious. You I don't even look... think Perth is the obvious. I think New, the South Island and New Zealand. Yeah, New Zealand is definitely there. I don't know. Everyone's calling for the Bears, but it's an oversaturated market. In theory, I like the idea, Terry, and I want to underline in theory. In reality, we don't have enough talent to go 17 teams. Have you seen some of the benches across mm. the competition since the Dolphins have stolen so many bench players to play first grade? No. I just put it on the back burner. Put one more team in. Yeah, one, one more team. team, because I hate the buy, yes? Perth, Perth or New Zealand, if it's going to Perth, it's got to be the Bears. And end that, mm -hmm. Perth Bears. Yep, no more Bears. Or go South Island, whatever you want to call them. Yeah, I but completely the okay. 20 is too many, for now. Okay, if they come out and say tomorrow, hey, this is in 10 years, sweet. Yeah. But not now. Now, Dan, I know nothing about this next part, so this is That's all That's a change. For, this is all for you. You, you tell me the news. So, there are some rumours, let's, let's say rumours, talks, of some disharmony at the Roosters. James Tedesco, captain, best fullback, well, since Billy Slater at least, yep. probably some say he's better, I don't know, that's an argument nope. for another day. Joe Manu, pretty decent. Handy. You know, good, good player, you know, can play centre, play a bit of fullback. Joseph Suwili, arguably the future of the club. Future of the game. Well, yeah. Three players, one fullback position, something's got to give. James Tedesco, as we go to air, has re-signed for one year. Mm -hmm. There's a bit of a fracture within the club. Reportedly, let's put that right on tape, Terry. Some people want Tedesco to move on so they can move one of those players to save them. Because if Tedesco, you know, plays one or two more years, the thinking is one or both those players is going to leave when they're the future of the club. We saw it this past weekend. Sua Lee ran through. Look, Tedesco was in under the sticks. Decided to go himself. Held the ball up and put Sam Walker over. Could be a coincidence. Let, let's be honest. But I know a Roosters fan who's very, very close to me that says she saw it coming and then he didn't pass to Tedesco because of the fracture. What are your thoughts? My thoughts are if you're 19 years old and you want to play fullback over James Tedesco, rein your ego in. <laughs> Completely fair. That's that's the first thing for me. Second thing, if you Joey Manu, you've got a case because you're a current Golden Boot winner. Mm -hmm. However, you didn't win the World Cup. James Tedesco captained his country to the World Cup, mm -hmm. but there is a spot at number six for Joey Manu because I think they could move Luke Kiri on very easily. 
Yeah, I you don't. You put Kiri on the open market, he's straight away at the Dolphins. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. It's, it's he, a very good point. He waltzes into a lot of teams, right? But if you're a 19 year old kid and you've got the the shits with James Tedesco being the fullback at the club, when you were dreadful at fullback at the World Cup, he wasn't real good. No, Jerome Luai carried that team. He was not real good. Couldn't ball play. Kick returns were okay. He better center at the moment. Learn your craft. Yeah. Patience. Just learn your craft. you got the whole world in front of you. Like, the game is literally yours. In five years' time, you'll be the best player in it. Zip it. That's what I'm going to say. If they say to you, if you're a Roosters fan, I know it's hard to imagine because it could be anything worse. They said, all right. It could, it could be worse. It could be a Tigers fan. <laughs> Very true. You get Tedesco for one more year, but you lose Suwali, or you move Tedesco on and you get Suwali for the next five to ten years. Are you thinking about it, or are you just taking the, the best shot at the Premiership now and dealing with it? Oh, look, you've always got to have a look at the long term of it. I don't think the Roosters are going to win the comp this year, and depending on how they recruit for next year as well, I'd, I'd probably move James Tedesco on. However, I'm not doing it at the demand of Suli. He needs to just rate. He's got this unfathomable ego at the moment mm. that just needs to come come in a little bit. Realise that the guy at the fullback has won two premierships, has captained his Pretty good. state, has captained his country, has got the origin shield that you'll be part of one day, and he's got the World Cup that you'll never win if you play for Samoa. So, just chill. Uh, Scotty Drinkwater. Ah, yes. Scotty Drinkwater. Bit of trouble, that hit. Three weeks. Should have been more. Oh, I think he's lucky. He's really lucky. When it happened, uh, I thought send off. I'm going to say straight away, yep. I thought send off. Because he had time to brace, he made zero attempt to jumped. tackle. He did Shoulder. Yeah, no arms. No he arms. braced himself. If he'd done this, mm. okay. High tackle. It was an accident. I don't think for a second he did it on purpose. But he braced for it, and he made no attempt to tackle. That's got to be a send off. Well, I think he did it on purpose. I don't think he meant to break his jaw, though. <laughs> yeah, that's As funny. you said, he stopped, he braced, he looked, and he, he tucked. Yeah, he got him. That's a shoulder charge. The fact that he broke the jaw. Now, I know the judiciary says we don't take injuries into place. Mm. And I get, and as you can tell, because Oates got a broken jaw and Drinkwater's getting three weeks and Simkin got close line and Safi's getting five weeks. So they aren't taking it into it. But if you ask me what's worse, it's the Drinkwater one. Absolutely. And, and how he didn't get sent off. Like, there was no bottle for that referee <laughs> whatsoever. He absolutely... He, Oh, how how the, the, we that is lucky. a textbook shoulder charge to the chin, and it's not as though a bloke's running on his knees. This is Corey Oates. Yeah. He's a tall dude. Yeah. There was plenty of space to get him below the jaw. Corey Oates is six five. Like you've. Oh. I'm a huge fan of Scotty Drinkwater, but that was just a horrible moment of madness. It's going to cost him three weeks. He's lucky he wasn't five. Definitely should have cost him the rest of the game. Yeah, he should have cost him the rest of the game. Should have cost him five six weeks. Easy. Get well soon, Corey Oates. We know you're a big fan of the show. We'll send you the t-shirt in the mail as we promised. Uh, let's talk about some underrated signings this mm-hmm. year. Now, you've put on here Jermaine Hopgood mm-hmm. and Sean O'Sullivan. Yeah. I think correct. But I'm going to say there's one who's leapfrogged one of his teammates at the moment for the underrated signing of the year. I think he's Jermaine Hopgood. I think he's been really... He, <laughs> he's been good. He's been good, yeah. Jeremy Marshall King. Yeah, yeah, very, very that's good. Player from line. We we said that when he signed, mm-hmm. it was like, oh, that's one, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. It's not always the big name players that make the big. No, I mean like Reed, Reed Marnie has been really good for yeah, the really tour and was the best player on the park. Yep, probably the best player of the weekend was yeah, Reed Marnie. He's very good, but yeah, for mine, Jeremy Marshall King. That's that's a really underrated signing. <laughs> Last year, a lot of people were saying, oh, he's not in the top echelon of number nines. Yeah, he is. Yeah, I think he is. Oh, yeah. I think there are a lot of average players. Yeah. yeah. Without, without naming any. <laughs> but I think he's very, very good. Yeah, look, going back to Jermaine Hopgood, he's been Parramatta's best player two weeks in a row. And, I mean, I know they're in losing efforts, but he's leading the zero tackle MVP votes. Spoiler alert, I don't know if they're out yet. Uh, one tackle aside, the Matt Moylan miss, I think he was fours. So that's a nine and a half out of ten game. And this is a bloke that couldn't break the Penrith side. I mean, it's not the fact that I don't think he could have broken the Penrith side. If he was still there this year, he's playing for them. But he's come yeah, off the bench. It, it's spot on. I, I don't blame him at yeah, all. For, and I think I Parramatta have bought an absolute ripper. I love Sean O'Sullivan. You've 
Gordon I think, record. I think he's great. Yeah. I think Sean O'Sullivan's really. I think he was the best. Players. He was the best New South Wales Cup halfback last year. Mm-hmm. Got a deserved premiership ring. Has gone to the Dolphins and been absolutely amazing. I think Jerry Marshall King's been better. Completely fair. And I think the Hammers there as well. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. No, maybe we underrated the old Dolphins. I didn't. Now, Dan, people were riding Parramatta off. You love to see it. You do. 0 oh, 5, they're screaming. I think they're in trouble. They got Manly at Manly this week, and you're not talking about Manly of last year, you're talking about Tom Turbo inspired Manly. They are a completely different team with him. There's every chance that Parramatta go 0 oh, 3. Okay. Yeah. They're missing their two best second rollers. Ryan Madison's out for comical reasons. Mm. Sean Lane's not there. He's due back about five I or six. Papali, they let him go to the Tigers. Which was very, very dumb. Stupid. They lost a one-possession game to Melbourne in Golden Point. Which they shouldn't have lost. They lost a one-possession game to Cronulla, which I would also argue they shouldn't have Score lost. Score flattered them in that one. So, it, the alarm bells. Okay, they've got a difficult few weeks. But even if they go 0-5... This team can win seven or eight in a row, and they've got an easy draw coming up after the Roosters in a couple of weeks. I'm not worried. As funny as it would be, we've already read, I wrote King Gutho off. In an earlier group chat, you asked me, and I said he's done, he's washed. Watch him come out and be the best player in the competition this weekend. I'm not worried at all. I, th- I think Manly get him. I think the 0-3 and, and the panic that sets in in Parramatta fans is real quick. I think the, uh, the lineup for the returns that... Peter wins for all those premiership shirts that have gone out there. Would you know that would be sensational at the moment? Yeah, a lot of stock pa- credit. Mm. Parramatta are going to make the finals. They're just not as good as they were last year. And this is what happens when you let the best second row in the competition and the best number nine, and, very the, and you replace them with no one and a broken down Josh Hodgson. Uh, completely fair. I think you'll be all right, Parramatta fans, and we're not fans of your club by any stretch. I yeah, but I mean, right. your ceiling this year was six to eight. That's where you're going to finish. That's fine. 0 and 5, they say. We'll see. We'll Hopefully. Jerry. Okay. Talk to me, Dan. It's time to talk some black, white, and blue. How good is a win? The first of the season, first of many. First of many. Look, really good uh, performance in patches. No Nico, no worries. Yeah, no Nico, no worries. Braden Trindle. <laughs> Sensational, Matt Moylan stepped up. I mean, the only way was up from him. After Made a break. I haven't seen that for a few. Uh, Will Kennedy. So good. New South Wales Player of the Week. Was that his best ever performance? It's up there. It's top few, I'd say. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's up there. It, the one thing that I was just happy about was when a break was made, he was there for support. That's true. we saw that in New South Wales Cup when he was killing teams in New South Wales Cup and we won the competition. Mm-hmm. His support play was fantastic. And that was a bit non-existent when he's got to grade. But he looks bigger, stronger. He looks Healthy confident. Will Kennedy. Yeah. I was talking to a good friend, Paul. I was talking to you about it as well. I've got him about sixth best fullback at the moment. He's very good. He's in real good form. I think he played well last week too yeah. in a loss to South. Got points last week. Don't have points. He looks confident. He looks healthy, as you said, which I think goes with it. We saw him in the preseason. You know, he, the photos. He just looked happy. Mm. I think... You know, last year, I'm certainly guilty of this, jumping on the, oh, geez, he wasn't real good in the finals, even though he had one leg. And, you know, it's easy. Yeah. And what, what you see last is what you judge on. Going by last You're week. You're only as good as your last game. He's fantastic. I, I think 1-17, to 17, Cronulla were very good, except Jesse Ramian, who had the worst game I've ever seen of any player ever in the history of rugby league. It happens. He's got that game in him. Healthy Will Kennedy is a different, is, it's a different beast. We very say it all the time. Pre-season, he ran down Jake Avrilo, who is quick. Quick, very quick. Got him over the line, saved the try. Yeah. Putting his body on the line, diffusing kicks, dropped a bomb this week. Yeah. And then someone said to me, when was the last time he dropped a bomb? I can't remember. Yeah, it's nice. Like, it's I'm not. Always so it. confident when a, a ball goes up. Um, but the backing up, that dummy, the try. And, and again, the support play for Siffa. Yep. So his support on. play was there. The cut in and out. That was beautiful. I thought he was going to go out, and I thought, oh, well, it's 50-50 yeah, here. He steps, and then step, steps. step, under the post, untouched. Gets up, big swan dive, big smile. Very, very good. Ronaldo Militalo had the worst game of his career last week. Mm-hmm. Came back with an absolute ripper. Scored a brilliant try. I love that. Ronaldo yeah. from Ganane. Shout out, big fan of the show, Dan Ganane. But the for me, the, the intercept, try. where he saved the try and he set it up. He didn't play to try and get Moses sent off. Moses had hold of his foot. He got up and played it with the other one, and we scored off that. That's the Ronaldo I love. He's back. I want to say this, though. Really smart play from Moses because, he, yes, he tackled him, and he had hold of his foot. 
but he held him so that way Ronaldo couldn't get up and go again. Yeah, yeah. So the minute Ronaldo got to his feet, he let go, he, and he backed his defender. Problem yeah, was there was no one there. It was it was, but in yeah. terms of effort, it was good. Yeah, Ronaldo, exactly. Ronaldo's quick. He didn't back himself though. He stopped and looked, which I think is smart because Moses is a noted speedster. Yeah. But more, he didn't kick ahead or he didn't try and go around him. He took the tackle. He got to play the ball. The try. other thing for that intercept as well, don't forget, is the jump, the catch, the regather, and then the takeoff. It was just, it was just fantastic. All around Little good play. Things. Very quiet game from Sione Katoa. Tragic game from Jesse Ramian. We won't see that again. I hope we don't, because we I've never... only got so much hair left to pull out. We'll never see that again from him. Our forwards, I thought, were fantastic. The updated run meters had Dalfa Nukin around about 170, McInnes yeah. around about 150, Toby 130, Oregon Kafusi off the bench, great punch. He was much better. You know what I want to add? Our bench use was terrible. Uh, Connor Tracy, perfect. No errors. Yeah, Connor Tracy didn't play. Royce Hunt, 11 minutes. Yeah, didn't, didn't love the use. Just put Tom Hazelton on the bench. I got to admit, I was a little bit worried late on when Dal Finucane's like holding himself together and they're running at him and he's bleeding and his eyes are all messed up and he's, he's like this and he's making tackles. Need to worry. He no. held on, but geez, he just he had players on the bench. Use him, please. <laughs> I, I get it. Royce Hunt hasn't played. He's a big unit. He's probably got no cardio in there. You know what? <laughs> Tommy Hazelton yeah, could just... have played the game. I don't know why Connor Tracy was picked on the bench before the game, and now I still don't know after. Because the way Ramian was playing, if you were ever going to hook a bloke, it was him. Yeah. So I don't know what the thinking was. It was like Fitz had, well, if Talakai has a bad game, I've got, I've got Tracy. He's like, well, we saw how bad Talakai was last week, so I'm going to give Ramian a ride. Like, yeah, I just... Man, it was bad. Look... It was comical. You know, it was, it was really... A player who's been in red-hot form to start the season... My whipping boy, Britt Nakora. He's been real good. He's been watching the show. and That line he ran for the try. My gripe is that he was up against Bryce Cartwright. Mm-hmm. Terrible defender. Mm-hmm. He was up against Bailey Simonson yeah, and Mike Acevo as well, who are not noted defenders. We go there once. We hit him with a... He hits a great line. We hit him with a great ball. And then we don't go there again. You take that the week before, South Sydney noted that Teague, Talakai, Moylan uh, and Ronaldo weren't talking to each other yep. and they attacked there all night. The issue that I have is that Cronulla see a weakness and they just go there and go there and go there. Whereas South Sydney saw the weakness on the right, went left, spread it and scored. Mm-hmm. We need to start playing smarter. Too much crash ball still? Uh, still? We've got the worst number nine in the competition, I don't care. Mitch Kenny's better than him. But... Huge shout out to the left side after conceding four tries last week. This week didn't even look like conceding. Brilliant. Yeah. The right side though wasn't real good. Oh, That's okay. Once, once, once we get it this weekend, together. both yeah. sides go together. But overall, mate, I was pretty happy with the performance. Very happy with the result. You take that. I've got a concern, Dan. It's not on the list. It's right there. Ah, it is Terry's concern. Underline. It's. I've got a concern. Go on. Last week, we missed 52 tackles and conceded 27 points. This week, we missed 22 tackles and conceded 26 points. Every tackle's a point. (laughs) Just about. But you Mm. miss 50 to concede 27, or you miss 20 to concede 26. So big improvement in the missed tackles, but not so much the quality of the missed tackles. Yeah. A stat you pointed out earlier. Cronulla are the equal highest attacking team, yet the the worst worst defensive. defensive team. I wonder what money you would have got for that in the preseason. I mean, keep it up. If we're going to win games 30 to 26 every week, I don't really care. I don't care if we win 1 0. I will take it, but I don't like that last minute when we got the ball and we throw it away and run into touch. Just just win the game. The, the thing was, though, when when Parramatta took the scrum feed and they you knew they were going right, I knew Bailey Simpson was going to yeah, drop the ball. It's it, terrible. It wasn't a worry at all. I'm still a little bit worried about the size, but a new signing, Terry. A rumoured new signing that should hopefully be announced in the next few days. Apparently, a ginormous Roosters junior who played for the Maori All-Stars will be signed yep. by Cronulla in the next few days. We're waiting on an announcement before we go too much. But what we do know... We haven't even heard his name. No. Nope. So we don't know who it is. But rumours are out there. We will comment next week, hopefully. What we do know, though, Sam Stone Street re-signed with Cronulla, upgraded to the top 30. And some people... Are already calling for his inclusion. Perhaps a little bit early, but... Ronaldo to off. the centres and Stone Street to... I'd live with it. I'd oh, live with it. Let it ride. I like it. He was very, very good for Newtown again. Make sure you get out there early this week, albeit in Canberra, because I think he's going to score some more tries. 
Uh, three from three. Jersey Flag, Newtown, Cronulla, all got up. Long may it continue. And we said that we had depth this year. We've, we did. We're one of the deepest teams in the competition. We did. Uh, you're going to see some teams when they get the injuries, they're going to fall away for us. We've already seen some injuries. We've seen the players stepping up. The next man up's ready. Yes, we've gone and picked this kid up from the Roosters as well. Probably yeah. going to go and take the final top 30 spot yep. for us. We are deep. We are deep. There's some players in the top 30 that play Eero. People are screaming for his inclusion. He's not even in the, top, even 30. In the top 30. You know, we got Atkinson starring again for uh, Newtown. and Bradbury, Atata. And we don't even have Kay Dykes fit. I'm, um, I'm feeling pretty good. A win makes you feel good. Three wins makes you feel very good. Dan? Yes. I know something that you're really passionate about, the NRLW. Big fan, especially the inclusion of the Sharks. Now, there was a quote from a Fox Sports article. Uh, I don't know who wrote it. I apologise. Probably we'll staff the, writers. We'll put the quote up here. Uh, that Cronulla have made some some big moves in the player transfer market. Now, of course... Got to upset some foundation teams. Yeah, in their efforts to retain international talent, I believe, was, mm-hmm. was used. Now, of course, we know the... Absolute joke that is the NRLW salary cap. Mm-hmm. Hasn't been announced yet. So Cronulla may have these signings done but can't announce them yet. Uh, nor can any clubs for that matter. We won't see that till that's done. But I'm of the understanding that some big names are done. Some cross code names mm-hmm. perhaps, perhaps are done. And we're just waiting for an announcement before we can make an announcement. I'm pretty excited. Just hurry up. Get it done. Get it done. I want these names on. I want the names on the back of my daughter's jersey. And I want the games announced so we can go. Just give us a Maddie start on something. Terry. Talk to me, Dan. It's time for some top sport tips. Mate, how good are your Tigers going? They're dreadful. They are really bad. And I watched the video last week. You stitched me up again. You deserve it. Marriage made in heaven. You and the Tigers. Name a better combo. You can't. This is surely their week. No. <laughs> Probably not. No Ponga, no Braley, a player sent off, and you're like, well, 13... No, Luke Brooks exists. 12 and 12. <laughs> <laughs> Rugby league. I Mate, hate them. Let's move forward as quickly as possible. I hate them. You losers. Completely fair. Round three. This is make or break. I'm broken. Broken. Mm. Uh, Thursday night, uh, Good game. Four Pines Stadium, the Manly Warringah Seagulls taking on the Parramatta Eels. Now, I have said I, I think the Eels going 0 3 in this one. Manly looked a more confident unit with Turbo. Very, very good. Yeah. They've moved Jake to prop, mm-hmm. which is a great move for them because it brings Josh Alloway off the bench. <laughs> Josh Schuster comes in? Too. Yeah, Josh. Wow. Maybe. Maybe, yeah, does he? You can't, like, he's got to come off the bench. I don't know if you can, the way John's played, but uh, I don't think it matters. Parramatta are going to get that victory. No, they're not. No, oh, I think they will. No, nah, Manly got him. I don't know why. Garrick's going to get that trick. Mm. Turbo's going to have about 10 tries. Parramatta have to win this game. They if won't. If they go 0-3, that's bad. They won't. They, w- they won't win this game. Manly at Manly with Turbo... That's a match made in heaven. That is a marriage that we deserve. And we deserve to see Tommy Turbo back. I'm going to pick Manly in this one. I'm going to pick Manly 13 plus. Parramatta, 1 to 12. 6 o'clock on a Friday afternoon. Finally, a game worthy, worthy of this time well, slot. I don't think so. Only one, only one team. Because the other team's leading the competition. True. The Newcastle Knights deserve all the bad time slots. Mm-hmm. The Dolphins don't. No, they've earned the way out. Now, Callum Ponga won't play because the seven-day turnaround, he won't make it, which is a real shame. I'm actually starting to worry about Ponga. Let's not joke about that. What, the update on Braley? Not sure, to be honest. Yeah. I don't think he can play either. He got HA'd. Seven-day turnaround. Unless he, because Ponga's got multiple, it definitely goes for him. I don't know about Braley, but Frizzell might miss. Yeah. Uh, so there were, the other in Safidi definitely won't be Safidi's there. Safidi's gone, yeah. Uh, I never thought I'd see the day that the Dolphins go 3-0. and oh. Well, I mean, I'm going to tip them. And <laughs> I'm going to tip them 13 plus. That'll, that'll be the third time that I've tipped them because I, I just believe in this Dolphins thing. Incredible. Team. You have got Dolphin fever. <laughs> I think they win by 1,000. Newcastle, yeah. don't even bother. Yeah, great, great fullback matchup, that one as well. Hammer <laughs> versus Miller. I saw Miller take a nice bomb on the weekend and then run 40 metres with just his footwork and his speed. Great to see him doing well. Going to lose, though. Uh, now, Friday night, absolute ripper. 
I still believe this game should open the competition. This should be the yeah. first Thursday night game every single year. Mm. The Roosters and the Rabbitohs, two teams that hate each other. The big rivalry. And the thing about putting it in round three, you get injuries. You get you suspensions. You Just give us round one. Yeah, round one. I'm happy if they play every week because this game is going to be so good. I'll be there. I've been invited by a very good friend of the show, a Roosters fan. I won't name him because, you know, it's embarrassing. Because you don't want to admit you've got a Roosters fan as a friend, <laughs> Paul. That's it. But uh, I think this will be arguably the game of the round. Now, both I don't. Both teams are missing players. But I think it evens right out. Bunnies get some, they get to Tola back, which is humongous. Oh, this is good. I don't think this will be the game of the round because I think South's going to absolutely flog them. I think South will win because I don't think the Roosters have quite got their mind on the job. I don't care if this is 50 to 48. Don't care who wins. Probably more like 50 nil. I'm going the Rabbits big here. I think they win one or two. I think, I think the, the rivalry will lift it. I think it's going to be so good. Uh, your Super Saturday starts off with a, uh, a pretty good game. I'm, I'm happy with this one. Gold Coast Titans against the Melbourne Storm. It's the Melbourne Storm are really depleted. Lots of injuries. No Nelson for the next six to eight weeks. Yeah, that was a monster. horror. Um, this is probably the Titans' level of a team that they can compete with. Getting smoked by the Dragons, Dan. Yeah, Didn't I'll tell I let you, you know about it? You certainly did. Oh, I drew him out of a hat, Terry. 20 minutes in, I'm thinking, this is done. The Titans yeah. are going to romp this in. Then they forgot how to play football. David Fafita had the game of all games last week. Came back this week and remembered his name is David Fafita. Forgot how to play football. I'm really worried about him, but they're going to be way too good here. I, the game was 12-2, whatever it was, mm. and I, I can't. I think I went and like put one of the sheets in the dryer and got That's stuck, first, like yeah. you know, watching a butterfly or something. I came back out and the dragons are all yeah, over. three tries. Ravalara in the corner. I think they right the wrongs, based more purely on the fact that I couldn't name half this Melbourne side. Apart from Hughes, Meany, and I mean, I don't know if Xavier Coates is playing. Harry Grant's pretty good. Yeah. Mm. Other than that, it's a pretty ordinary Melbourne team. Titans. Wouldn't surprise me if they lost 13 plus again. Go the Titans. 5.30 on your Super Saturday up at Townsville. Uh, you got... Thousand degrees. Cowboys against the Warriors. Now, no drink water brings the Cowboys back. Ooh, it certainly does. They still have Chad Townsend, which brings them back. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Warriors are awful. Nice. This is going to be a crap game. I'm going on record as saying that Peter Hicko can never play fullback again. The 10 minutes he was there on the weekend were Jesse Remy and last weekend levels of terribleness. Now, I heard he's actually been ruled out, so I'm pretty he's confident that he won't or something, isn't he, for two <laughs> Exactly weeks. right. They've got a pretty handy fullback there in Valentine Holmes who has to play number one. Yeah, yeah. It has to be. Holmes has got to go for number one. Who looks there and goes, oh, I got Valentine Holmes or Peter Hicku and says, I'll pick Peter Hicku. Nobody. That's who. That said, they'll win this quite easily. Yeah, they, they should win this game, but it'll be dreadful. Mm -hmm. Probably one to miss. And then to round off your Super Saturday, Super Saturday, the Broncos are taking on the Dragons up there at Suncorp. A very surprising performance from the Dragons. Yeah, I'll tell you what. I was not expecting that whatsoever, especially for them to win 13 plus against your team. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to, I've got to go with the Broncos here. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Broncos too, mainly because they've been the form team of the competition, albeit across two weeks. Reese Walsh, mm -hmm. they kept saying it was his debut for Brisbane. I'm like, what are you talking about? It was. Yeah. He didn't play for Brisbane, I completely forgot. He looks at home there. Hey, he didn't play around one either, did he? No, no, he was out. So they were right. I was yeah, wrong. Yeah. So that's rare. But uh, Brisbane by plenty. Yeah, because he, he was a development player for... Yeah, and they the let Bronx. him go, and everyone's like, what are you doing? Mm. Bought him back. They knew what they were doing. Funny yeah. that. That Brisbane forward pack is so good. Carrigan, Flegler, Haas. Wow. Yeah, and you had Capewell in there yeah. as well. You know, they've, they've got some really... Ezra Man playing well above. Herbie Farnworth. Probably the best player in the competition at the moment for the first two weeks. Herbie Farnworth has spiders on him. No one will go near him. No one will tackle him. I think they run right here on the Dragons, despite the very good performance in round two. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to pick this one 13 plus. Yeah, me Broncos too. Broncos have got this. Brisbane. Uh, yeah, Sunday afternoon, four o'clock. Who's playing, Someone's Terry? playing... The dogs are playing against The someone. Bulldogs are playing at Belmore, back to Belmore, and you could not script it any better. They're playing Terry's Tigers. This is the game of the round. The dogs never win at Belmore. Well, that's going to change. I'll yeah, tell you what, if they change. don't win this weekend, give it up. Put the place on the do not play out list. 
because I'll never win. But that's going to be like for the Tigers. When was the last time they won there? Those losers have lost two games in a row. Their spiritual home against very I beatable teams. Them. How about the halfback battle? Easy for me to say. Luke Brooks, Carl Flanagan, terrible. Probably the two worst halfbacks in the competition. Bulldoggies. Oh, God, can't pick the dogs. You cannot. Dogs by plenty. How much are the Tigers going to win by, Terry? Four. Sunday afternoon, at least you've got something to look forward to here. The Canberra Raiders against the Cronulla Sharks. This will be a good game. Raiders have won the last eight against the Sharks. Yeah, this worries me. Yeah. They just play a game that we just can't handle. Big, strong, mobile forwards. Josh Papali, apparently he's back early from his calf injury. Of course he is. Ricky Stewart said in the press conference he didn't know when he was going to come back. Fox Sports have said that they expect him back this week. Take an extra week on me. Please. Uh, Even still without him, their forward pack is big. Frightening, yeah. Yeah. um, In saying that, their halves haven't quite hit the heights that you think they would. Jamal Fogarty, he was a good pickup for them, but he is bang average. Canberra fans are calling for White to move the lock. Why? I don't know. It's Canberra fans. But that shows where they're at right now. Yeah, they're, I I don't know. They're, look, they're, they're back line. Sebastian Chris ran for 190 metres the other day, right? Yeah. I had to go and watch the highlights to notice him. Ball playing, non-existent. Non-existent. He runs hard. If Corral can't beat him this week, with or without Nico, I'll tell you what. I mean, Jordan Rapineau, is he looking at suspension or not? He's gone. He's, he's been he's out for four weeks. Yeah, cool. So they've got Albert he Havawati. No, yeah, he normally rips us a new one when he plays. Sebastian Chris does as well, but normally from centres. Yep. And normally so when he's running onto back. a bomb. So, um, this is Cronulla's chance. Yeah, oh, this is Cronulla's chance. So as last week, we've I'm not got, tipping him. We've got the, Canberra jinx, jinx, the jinx, double jinx. Jinx, jinx, jinx. Hey all, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Rugby League Outlaws brought to you by Punch of Media, our good friends at Top Sport, onelittlefootyfan.com.au and the Stubby Club. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, give us some love in the comments. We've been reacting. Speak. No. Rugby League, baby. Yeah.